Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aquia Daniela and you are watching Town of Tawia. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the case of Tory Lanes and Meg the Stallion. Social media right now is in uproar after the case of Daystar Peterson, also known as singer slash rapper Tory Lanes, and award-winning female artist Megan Pete, also known as Meg the Stallion. Recently, Tory Lanez was found guilty of shooting Meg the Stallion and will face a maximum of up to 22 years in jail. And also, there is a really high chance that he'll be de deported back to his home country, which is Canada. But this has been a long case, over two years running, like I've said, and so much has happened, including a lot of people claiming that Meg Thee Stallion is a liar, a lot of free Tory, Tory didn't do it claims. Recently, uh, Drake came out with a song on his album with 21 Savage, where he insinuated that Meg Thee Stallion was lying while also being insensitive about the whole situation and there's just so much to it that's going on online right now where people are taking sides and there's just been a lot of drama that's unraveled so why is this rap drama something that i think is necessary to be discussing on my channel well in this video i'll be discussing the media's inherent misogynoir and the miso and the misogyny displayed in the court of public opinion particularly as it pertains to sex positive women so in case you're not up to date with this particular case on the 12th of July 2020, the LAPD were called after reports of gunshots in the, in the Hollywood Hills. Footage of the incident surfaced, which showed Megan limping out of a vehicle after the police pulled the SUV over for a gun arrest. Also seen in the video, seemingly getting out of the car of the same car was friend of Megan, Kelsey Nicole and artist Tory Lanez who was arrested for carrying a weapon. So after this incident there was all sorts of claims of what happened on social media but neither artist came out and really spoke about the events or what it was that actually happened. So rumours from a close source began to speculate that Megan had simply injured her foot on some glass while simultaneously there were also accusations that Megan was limping from gun wounds from because of Tory Lanes. But none of the claims were addressed by Megan nor Tory until August 2020, almost a month later when she uploaded an image of her foot revealing that she had been hospitalized by gun wounds and was healing well. The next day she went live on Instagram and confirmed her side of the story by claiming Tory shot me. Yes, this Tory shot me. You shot me. And you got your publicists and your people going to these blogs lying and stop lying. You draw shot me. Like everybody in the car, it's only four mother in the car. Me, you, my homegirl, and your security. Everybody in the car arguing. I'm in the front seat. This in the back seat. I get out the car, I'm done arguing. I don't want to argue no more. I get out. I'm walking away. E this oh from out the back seat of the car starts shooting me. You shot me. I ain't get cut by no glass, but let me tell you why they saying that. When the when the police, because the people in the neighborhood, there's a witness. The police come. I'm scared. All this going on with the police. The police is, is shooting my for anything. The police was literally killing black people for no mother reason as soon as the police tell us i'll get out the mother car the police is really aggressive you think i'm about to tell the police that we us black people got a gun in the car you want me to tell the laws that, that we got a gun in the car so they can shoot all of us up i'm scared a helicopter over us and some more shit. why the f would i tell the laws somebody got a gun in this car and this shot me so i can get shot you can get shot she can get shot he can get shot i ain't tell the police what happened immediately right then because i didn't want to die all of these events took place after the two artists were at kylie jenner's pool party in which both artists could be seen on instagram live earlier that night then a month later tory lanes responded on twitter stating to my fans i'm sorry for my silence but respectfully i got time today 9 p.m pst the next day he released an album named Daystar, 
with the song entitled Money Over Fallout, in which he accused Meghan of lying about being shot. The pervading narrative was that Meg Thee Stallion fabricated this information due to her envy of Tory Lane's attraction to Kylie Jenner, which led to an argument after they left the party. This was the first clear motive addressed for Meghan's alleged lies. Then, in October 2020, Los Angeles prosecutors charged Tory Lanez with felony assault. While much of the details of this were hearsay, according to NBC, Tory's attorney pleaded not guilty and Lanez then tweeted, a charge is not a conviction. He says, time will tell and the truth will come to light. I have all faith in God to show that. Love to all my fans and people that have stayed true to me and know my heart. A charge is not a conviction. If you've supported me or Meg through this, I genuinely appreciate you. The prevailing narrative was that Meg the Stallion fabricated this information due to her envy of Tory Lane's attraction to Kylie Jenner, which led to an argument after the party. This was the first clear motive addressed for Meg Meghan's alleged lies considering that the trio had been uh, seen on Instagram Live that night and Meg and Tori seemed to have formed a close relationship prior to this altercation based on their interactions through the media. Interest in the case sort of died out around 2021, but if we fast forward now to April 2022, Megan tells her side of the story in more detail to Gail King on CBS News. She addresses the effects this had on her mental health and further denies the jealous ex claims. What was the nature of your relationship with Tory Lanez? Because he has led, led people to believe that it was a sexual relationship, that it was, uh, that you two were dating. What was the nature we of We were your... not dating. We what were really name? close. We were friends. We hung out like every day. And his mom passed too. So when I felt like we were bonding over, over that, that. And did you have an intimate relationship with him? Like sexual? Yeah, yeah. Did you have, <laughs> did you, Megan, did you have a sexual relationship with Tory Lanez? Yes, that's my question. Um, I didn't have a sexual relationship with Tory. So why do you think he's putting out the story that the two of you had a relationship and that you're making the whole thing up? I think that he is trying to deflect from the fact that he committed a crime. So you guys end up in a car. You, Tory Lanez, your friend at the time, Kelsey, and his driver slash security. Mm -hmm. Kelsey Harris was one of Megan Thee Stallion's best friends from Houston. There was an argument and you get out of the car, right? At that point, the argument wasn't even with me. Like the argument was with the two people in the back seat. So I asked the driver to pull the car over, like I'm done with this. And I should have stayed out of the car. Like I should have not got back in the car. Mm -hmm. And they was like, Megan, just get back in the car. We almost there, like just get back in. Mm -hmm. So I get back in the car. It's like, it's getting worse. The like, arguing in the car. The arguing in the car is getting worse. And I don't want to be in this car no more. Like, cause I see it's getting crazy. Mm -hmm. So I get out the car and it's like, everything happens so fast. And all I hear is this man screaming is, he said, dance and he starts shooting. And I'm just like, oh my God. Like he shot a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And I, I so was so scared. So is he in the car shooting from the car, Megan? He Alexi? is standing up over the window okay. shooting. So I like drop down and I crawl in somebody's driveway. Like I can't believe you shot me. <laughs> And what is he saying, Tory Lane saying? He's after apologizing. He He's I'm so sorry. Please don't tell nobody. I'll give y'all a million dollars if y'all don't say nothing. Are you offering me money right now? Help me. Like, and if you're sorry, just help me. Like, but at that moment, we didn't even make it to, to the house. Like somebody had already called the police and it was like so many of them, it was helicopters. I was like, oh my God, we all about to die. Like the George, the George Floyd incident had just happened. The police are definitely very much shoot first, ask questions after. So I'm like, it's a hot gun in the car. I'm bleeding. I've been shot. They about to kill somebody. Like something bad is about to happen. <laughs> So somebody hears the gunshots, they call the police. The police come and they say what to you? They tell everybody to get out, get the, out car. the car. Get out of the car. And then you can see the footage of me in the 
swimsuit, uh, living backwards, feet bleeding. Mm -hmm. My first reaction still was to try to save us. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't want to see anybody die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just said, I stepped on glass. So when I see people trying to use that against me, like trying to act like I'm lying. Oh, she stepped on glass, she never got shot. I'm the one who said I stepped on glass. I was lying to protect all of us. Mm -hmm. Me straight to the, the hospital, hospital. Mm -hmm. and the police questioned me, and I said it was just glass. You still stuck with that I story. I stuck with it, it was glass. And right as the officers were like, okay, we done with this, we leaving, the doctor came in and he was like, you know, you got bullets in both of your feet. Like, you got fragments in this foot, and it's like right on the back of your Achilles. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... There is a medical report that says that there were bullets uh, that you had been shot. Mm -hmm. And the medical report also says that to this day you still have bullet, still bullet fragments, fragments in, in your my foot. feet. In text messages obtained by CBS News, Kelsey Harris, the other woman in the car, texted Megan's security guard saying, help, Tori shot Meg. Based on this clip, many people online have critically analyzed Megan's interview and found many discrepancies in her retelling of the story. They felt her story just wasn't logical and it seemed she was missing out some essential details for the case. This was one of the many reasons that it was thought that she was lying. Then on December 12th, 2022, the trial began. The defense's point is what happens in the car is this. Tori questions Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey, why are you backing up Meg? for me trying to, you know, get it on with Kylie Jenner. Meg has been snaking men from you your whole life. I hooked up with you, Kelsey, and then Meg went behind your back and hooked up with me. And, Kelsey, this is not the first time. You have been hooking up with Ben Simmons. Meg went behind your back and hooked up with Ben Simmons. You have been hooking up with the baby. Meg went behind your back and hooked up with the baby. And so the defense starts dropping all these grenades. The crowd is captivated. The jury's like, oh, what's going on? And there's every reason to believe that there could have been a fight here, not between Tori and Meg, but between Meg and Kelsey. And the shooting could have not been Tori. It could have been done by any one of the other people in that car. But his attorney claims that he's innocent and that this is all just a case of jealousy. ABC's Zareen Shah was in the courtroom today. And what did Tori's attorney tell you that their goal was for the cross-examination today? You know what, I asked him right before lunch. I said, so what's your goal? What do you hope to accomplish today? He said, we're going to show how she lies. And the, the defense attorney pressed her on some really granular details. And there were some moments where she said, I don't remember. I could have. Maybe. You could tell that he was really trying to poke holes in, in her story to, that, that she gave to her lawyers. He also said yesterday, Lindsay, and this was one of the most interesting things that I think he said yesterday, he said there was a witness who saw a female with a gun. It's a really important detail. And then my producer, Abby, saw the lawyer today, and she said, you know, can you clarify this? What do you mean about with a gun? And I pressed him upstairs about this as well, and he says, I, I said, do you mean holding a gun? And he said, no, with a gun. He basically meant in the vicinity of a gun, near a gun. Mind you, this is not something that the jurors know. They are still remembering what he said yesterday, that a witness saw a, a female with a gun. Friday of that week, an LA jury convicted Lanes of assault with a semi-automatic firearm. So now that I've wrapped up a timeline of the events and you're sort of familiar with the surroundings of everything that's happened, let's discuss how the situation has actually been approached and some of the ways that it's exposed are external and internalized misogyny without even realizing. Zareen, what did Megan say happened that night? Lindsay, it wasn't just what she said happened, it's how she said it. She was really emotional in court today. She said, this story is not just about a shooting. This story is about who I had sex with. You remember yesterday, the defense, they were really pitting her against her friend, talking about the fact that they shared intimate partners, multiple intimate partners. She said in court today, I had just done a song with Beyonce. I did something of my dreams and I was shot at. And she said, they're, they're calling this the Megan Thee Stallion trial. I am not on trial. I wish he would have killed me. If I knew I would have to go through this torture, I wish he would have killed me. If you're familiar with Meg Thee Stallion's music, she is not shy of sharing her sexuality. And many of her songs explicitly exhibit her sex positive mentality with no shame. It's no question that throughout history, a woman's sexuality is something that 
is supposed to be non-existent to the public eye, and women's sexual appetite is still to this day a tabooed subject. There's definitely a double standard when it comes to women that engage in casual sex, particularly with multiple partners, and in general the idea and the concept of women engaging in sex for pleasure is generally something that is sort of shameful and something that women should be embarrassed of or publicly humiliated for. While there have been some modern movements to change this narrative, it's no doubt that in many black communities, not that much has changed. And this is understandable when you consider how deeply rooted misogyny is within our society. And it isn't just, so it isn't just the issue of media and entertainment. In the ABA Journal of Labor and Employment Law, entitled Workplace Rumors About Women's Sexual Promiscuity as Gender-Based Insults, Wendy Hess writes, a rumor that a woman is sexually promiscuous is, in essence, a gender-based insult. It censors a woman for violating the sexual double standard. Sexual rumors can undermine a woman's credibility and call into question her workplace achievements. Indeed, research shows that women perceived to violate the sexual double standard are thought less competent. So this is just a basic example of our everyday biases towards women. And this is seen in this particular case as, as opposed to digging into Tory Lane's lifestyle and recognising that he has a history of violent outbursts and countless court cases. The court of public opinion in this particular situation is based on finding all of the things that make Megan the Stallion less of a credible source, based on her hypersexual persona and her low position in society as a slut. Therefore, as opposed to the case at hand being focused on the gun wounds that were found on Megan's foot, the media began to become more concerned with elements of her credibility that were heavily skewed by gender biases. And an example of this was the searching narrative to Sawyer's final conviction, which was that Megan was a jealous ex-lover who was disloyal to one of her close friends. Now, even if this were to be true, and it seems based on the court case that many elements of this story was true, but this doesn't justify or further explain the reason that she was shot. But somehow the media would rather revel and shame her for her sexual history than protect her and seek justice against the physical violence that was inflicted on her. While it could be argued that it is important to question the integrity of a person's character when such serious accusations are made, questioning her on her sexual history when she isn't under oath does not quantify whether or not she has the capacity to lie about being shot in the foot. It instead creates a metric by which violence towards women is justified. Indirectly, the media communicate to women that when they're physically harmed, what matters more is how they contributed to the situation without taking into account the criminal activity that was most important to the case. Whether or not Megan the Stallion slept with Tory Lanes does not in any way justify her being shot in the foot and pressuring Megan in the court of public opinion to be honest about her sexual history with him is another way that women are shamed into believing that they are the catalyst of any wrongful harm or violence that's done towards them. While it is fair to accept that lying about sleeping with Tory Lanes challenges Meg the Stallion's credibility, when you understand the context of her situation regarding the media, being asked about her sexuality is a demeaning conversation to have on national television and you could empathise with why anyone would want to conceal that information, particularly when you understand the gender-based discrimination towards female promiscuity. And then you have the added layer of Meg the Stallion being a black woman. Not only does it fall under the bracket, the broad bracket of misogyny, it also falls under the more narrow issue of misogynoir. This can be defined as dislike of or contempt for or ingrained prejudice against black women. We've seen this throughout history where black women have been subject to an intersection of misogyny and racial injustice. I touch on this more in my video on intersectionality um, when I discuss the TV series Sex Education. You can head to that video after this one if you want to hear more about that. Find examples of this in discussions of uh, respectability politics. And we see it all the time where something like do-rags, for example, becomes a fashion statement, but bonnets constantly are constantly ridiculed when worn. While it's understandable that do-rags have become a fashion statement, many accessories commonly worn by black women have been a symbol of ridicule and shame. Other examples of misogynoir that we see in the media is the lack of urgency 
towards from the black community and from wider society regarding the R. Kelly case, despite him being a notorious predator for young women, young black women in particular throughout the years. In Meg's case, the lack of sensitivity when discussing this case of alleged violence, layered with a combination of how shame and gender-based insults were used as a way to undermine her reliability, emphasizes an ongoing issue with how poorly black women are often protected in cases of injustice. So my final thoughts on this whole situation. So honestly, I understand that it has been very hard to get clear evidence. There have been so many sides to the story. And also there were inconsistencies in, in Megan's um, retelling of the event. So that did not fit, help her in any way in, in regards to people believing her on this case. But I do think the insensitivity in which it was dealt with says a lot about how society sees women, but black women in particular. I do think that and I hate to say it, but I do, I genuinely do believe that if this was not a black woman, um, it, the case may have been taken more seriously. I think Tori wouldn't have been so nonchalant about the whole thing. Um, I highly doubt he wouldn't, I highly doubt if he, if it wasn't a black woman who often isn't defended in society, if it wasn't a black woman that he had shot, he wouldn't have been as cocky. I don't think he would have been, you know, as outspoken. I think he would have really understood the legal implications of what he had done. But knowing it's a black woman, knowing that she's got this, you know, hypersexual image, knowing the whole backstory of, you know, um, the fact that they were arguing over sort of, you know, people's sexual history, you know, between the trio of friends, knowing all this information, I'm sure that Tori, and I'd assume at least, that Tori um, had an understanding of the fact that it would be very unlikely for people to believe Megan, regardless of whether or not she told the true story. And I think that gave him a kind of um, calmness and a lack of urgency towards dealing with this case. So um, the fact that it's finally you know, being cleared and I guess I'm sure Megan's very happy that her name has been cleared. I am sort of glad to know that. Um, but it's sad. I think in a lot of this, and I guess this happens a lot with celebrities, like unless it's an everyday individual, I think sort of the lives of celebrities almost gets dehumanised, like out of fear of, out of fear of uh, idolising them, we end up, I think in some cases, dehumanising them. And I do feel like that's part of what's happened with this in terms of how insensitive everyone has kind of gone about the whole situation. Uh, I'm sure if it was just a, another story in the news about a young black woman being shot, I think a lot of us would have taken it a lot more seriously. But knowing, I guess, feeling like we know through parasocial relationships, I guess, feeling like we know these celebrities, um, almost, I don't know, it, it seems to kind of make people uh disregard anything that's said about them maybe because it's more like they're they're like characters in a show um i think that's part of how people sort of see uh cases like this but i do think that there's a lot to be said about this whole situation but that's just my two pence on this anyway uh i'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this whole topic and your whole perspective on this do you completely disagree with where i'm coming from do you agree let me know i'm really looking forward to hearing from you guys in the comment section below and if you have been subscribed for a very long time uh thank you so much and please head to my community section because i've got some words for you okay <laughs> okay <laughs> but if you are new here please subscribe and i hope to see you in my next video thank you bye oh and happy new year <laughs> Oh, I'm so good.